Hey, what's up everybody? So today I'm going to be starting off a new Let's Play where it introduces a bunch of several mods. Uh, a few of them mist craft, build craft, industrial craft, you know. Um, the more to come, obviously, you know, when you come in game, you'll see the mods that are already there. So I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in. So I've already renamed the world Let's Build Craft, just for fun. So let's generate a new world, which we'll be playing on. And let's see what we have to mess around with. Alright, new version of Optifine is available. Alright, so it looks like we've spawned right next to a village. That's, that's always good, that's always good. Uh, we've got some chickens, that's going to be useful. Uh, so to regenerate. Okay, this chicken needs to die. Oh, got some oil over there. That's, that's useful. I think that's part of build craft, so. The only bad thing about this world is there's lots of wild, uh, wild grass here. I hate wild grass. Um, right, we need to find some reeds. That's my main priority at the moment. What's our difficulty on? Peaceful. Alright. So, we need to find. There's some marble there. That could be useful when I'm coming to building my house. Um, but first of all, let's try and find some reeds. Alright, so we've got a jungle over there. But we're still need to try and find some reeds. There we go, there's some reeds. Alright, so let's chop these reeds down. And let's go back to the village and let's replant these reeds in the village. Because I'm going to make this village like a little resource center. That's my plan with it. So, what row doesn't have many things growing on? So, let's take away this. Of course, means we have to take away that. And let's just plant these reeds here. <laughs> let's have a little raid first. Come on. There we go. Oh goody, we have one reed left over. Um, I suppose we could just plant that somewhere random. Oh, there's some water. Where's some water? Oh, there's a hive. That's going to be useful. Um, God, we need to find a... Alright, let's just plant it here. There we go. Ah, got There we go. Alright. <laughs> so, uh, another. Oh my god, I'm low on uh, health. Food. I'm just gonna call it food. Alright, so what you can see here is I've installed NEI. Uh, let's go ahead and put it into utility mode. So, what I can do is turn magnet mode on and I can't spawn in these items. These are just so I can look up all the recipes for the mods because it gets really confusing. Oh yeah, I'm holding wheat. Uh, you can go away, sir. Because I need your beef. Um, another thing that we need to get... Oh, he's hiding. We need to get um, more feathers. Right, we need to get some wood as well. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and harvest some wood and... I'll be back once I've got the resources. Alright guys, so I just ate all the uh, meat that I just got and I've got hunger away from me. Um, but one thing I forgot to do was I forgot to check this little blacksmith house here uh, for what's in the chest. Oh, that's that's really useful. Um, so we've got some bread, two iron pickaxes, uh, iron ingots and some armour. Now, I just resorted my inventory and it just placed the ar best armor that I can wear using the inventory tweaks mod. And there's definitely some frame rate issues going on with Bandicam here. Um, I mean, I don't think render distance will affect it in any way. I think it's more or less random spikes of lag. But, um, yeah, I, it's random spikes of lag, so. It's not my own, like I could have it on far and it'll still like do the random spikes and like. 
but um, so wood I don't actually need wood so much now I can actually go and harvest lots of stone but it's definitely on my uh, to-do list alright guys so it's starting to turn night time now uh, I'm just gonna finish off a few more trees and then I'm gonna head back to the village uh, let's just chop down this last tree here and one thing that I definitely need to do is uh, find a sheep so I can get the wool. So that's my next objective. Um, apart from that, I'm just going to sleep through the night. Now I'm going to head to the mines. I'm not going to show you it because it's going to be boring, but I'm just going to gather some cobblestone for my housing. All right then, guys. So I gathered a few resources um, in the mines. Um, I didn't stand there for too long because I wanted to know a way out before I get ventured in deeper. But um, you can see if you if you know the mods, uh, you can probably identify what mods I'm I have installed so far. Um, so the basics of my housing is going to be a nine by nine square. So one, two, three, four. There we go. Yeah, I'm definitely suffering a lot of lag from Bandicam. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there you go. That's the nine by nine. I don't know if I have. I don't think I have enough cobblestone actually. So I'm probably gonna have to go into the mines again. But then it goes one, two, three. Four, I think it's four up. Yeah, four up. And then there will be the roof with a few guide uh, skylights. Um, I really need to sort out this FPS problem. All right, yeah. But um, then you just basically f uh, fill in all the sides. So what you do after filling in all those sides is you then do um, a line of cobblestone from one half to another half, another line of cobblestone from one half to the other half, so there's now four panels there, and then you uh, fill in uh, the gaps from the sides from there because you won't because that's a wall there. So you won't actually see um, that as it is with those lines. So you need to actually create the lines, e extra lines here, so it all uh, fits in. So it's all symmetrical. Um, so that's uh, the basics of what my housing is. I need to get more resources though. So I'll be back once I've finished this house. All right, then, guys. So I've now finished uh, this building. Uh, all I need is the glass, uh, but I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to show off some awesome mods now. So what we need to do is we need to make some paper. So that can be achieved by putting six canes in a line here. Right. Now what we need uh, to start off with is we need a notebook. I'll explain the uh, use of this later on. Uh, let's actually quickly make... Uh, double chest because I'm running out of inventory space here. Let's just grab that. Okay, so let's just place uh, tons of junk in here. In fact, let's just place everything in here and then we can grab out what's useful. Okay, so first of all, what we're gonna need to create is uh, we've already created the notebook. Now, what uh, we use with the notebook is a uh, writing desk. Now let me just get the recipe. So it's one, two, three, four, five bits of wood, an ink sack, an ink sack, and a feather. So let's quickly uh, create that. We've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got one feather and an ink sack. So you place it like that, 
and just in case uh, you don't like you keep forgetting the recipe in the crafting table you can just hit that question mark there and it will lay out the recipe for you in the crafting table so now that we have that let's just place that there now it's a double block this FPS lag is really affecting me now for some strange reason um, but basically you get the notebook and you place it in there now there is no there's no research <coughs> in this notebook so far <coughs> sorry so what we need to do is we need to get more paper and now what we do is we let's create two books here okay now what we need is we need one feather and two books okay now what you do is you place one book in there and you get a linking book now wherever you created this linking book um, it will uh, take you back from what I'm about to show you to the place where you crafted it which will be here so it will take me back here when I use it uh, now what we do is we use a book with a feather and that gives us, us a descriptive book and it gives us a random ID and well not random ID sorry a random age now what you do with this is you travel to a world basically it generates a new region for you to go to um, it's, it gets more detailed as you like build more stuff for the books but right now we need some data for our notebook so as you can see here it spawned us in a world with a jungle biome it looks like it's eternal night um, we have snow um, there's not much else I can really see from this apart from the sky color it looks like it's actually a sunset in the distance there it's hard to see with all this snow though um, so let's go ahead and go back using the returning book and here we are back into the place now it actually drops the books when you use them however I'd always recommend getting a linking book whenever you go to a another another dimension or doing another method which I'll show you soon but then what we do to learn um, what we just found, discovered with this book here we put it in here and it just discovered all that and it keeps it in the notebook now this can be used later on to create custom worlds which is very very useful but what we learned from this book is that we learned the medium biomes we learned the jungle biome, the ice plains and the forest biome we also learnt the green sunset, the blue sunset, black fog, normal fog, uh, bright mode, which is uh, so it eliminates like darkness and caves. It's all bright, <coughs> but enemies still spawn. There's eternal snow. There's fast time, so time goes a lot more faster in the realm. And we actually discovered a cave world, so um, that's pretty useful. Uh, cave worlds. Um, so let me show you, uh, let's create another book here and I'm actually going to show you a new feature so let's oh, <laughs> let's create some sticks and place them like so and place a three wooden planks in the middle that gives you link book stands now let's just create some more books oh. alright, so we need a linking book and then we need another descriptive book. Now what we can do with this, oh, I almost forgot uh, what you can do with these descriptive books. So this is the new one that I created. You can actually rename the books. So let's rename this one uh, Discovery World. And you can see here it's actually called Discovery World now. So if we place down a linking book stand, I think that's what it's called, yeah, link book stand, then you place the descriptive book on it, you can see, oh, that's uh, the uh, inventory tweaks, putting that book in my inventory. Uh, you can see that um, it actually displays the book and it won't... Uh, I'm pretty sure that if you just drop the book like that, eventually it will despawn. But if you put it on the stand then it won't despawn and it's really easy to identify which book is which. So you just use the book and you click on the black square and it will generate us a brand new world different to the other one so here we have generated a cave world now this cave world is a lot more obvious uh, because it's not snowing and it's not dark there's actually a hive over there so that's pretty useful um, lots of monsters will spawn in here though 
uh, because it's just eternal, uh, uh, like, it's basically eternal night. Um, but because this actually has bright mode on, um, we can actually see in it, which is very useful. Um, now there is a chance for your worlds to actually become, uh, like, corrupt. So, uh, there's a block which is called decay block. And it slowly spreads like a bacteria sort of mod. I think that's what it's called anyway. Um, and it spreads quite rapidly. I don't know if this is it over here, but I'm pretty sure it emits light. There's also a different sort of corruption, uh, which is if you load your world with too many like um, special features, then like the blocks start disappearing down into the void, um, which can be very dangerous. So yeah, this is a DK block, and it slowly uh, spreads, so it's quite easy to destroy. Um, but be careful because uh, any world that you spawn there's always a chance that it can spawn those DK blocks so now let's go on to this little island here and let's just place our linking book here we have the overworld text let's just name the book and let's just go back to the overworld alright so now we just need to learn what we learnt from that so let's just destroy the link book stand and that gives us the book back and the stand. Now let's just put it back into here. Now we discovered medium biomes, taiga hills, ice plains, forest hills, bright, eternal snow, normal time, and cave world. So we didn't we didn't learn anything different really from the uh, the book we first created. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to generate a bunch of these worlds, uh, hoping to fill up my notebook as much as I can. Um, one thing that I do need to look out for is I need to look out for dense ores because that's going to help me a lot. Uh, but if I find a good world then I'll show you it. But apart from that uh, you'll see my late notebook will be quite filled up. Alright then guys, so I switched over to Fraps uh, just to, because now my FPS seems to be fine but I had Minecraft maximized before. So I don't know if all the, f like, all the things will fit on the screen. If not I'll just have to put up with it or maximize the screen again. But I'm running a good 60 FPS now. Um, so I managed to fill up my notebook. It's been a very long time and I just threw uh, the books in lava because I didn't need them. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly generate a dense ore world just to show you how useful having dense ores are. So I make sure I have my linking book. In fact, let me just make a save. Let's uh, go ahead and put cheat mode on. Um, those saves are for my uh, single player world just in case I do what I'm going to do here. Uh, so let's create a save here so just in case uh, I go to a dimension because you seriously cannot get back. Um, oh actually wait, let's put those in the chest. You cannot get back without a linking book uh, to your other, to your, well your overworld. Um, so it's always good to just create a save. I know it's cheating in a way, but trust me, otherwise um, your whole world is just going to become useless. So I'm now going to uh, show you why dense ores are so, are so just so good. Right, let's equip all my armor and stuff. Right. So now let's put our descriptive book in here. Now, what you need to follow my steps very carefully. We need to create a hell world because monsters won't spawn in caves. We need a single biome. The lighting needs to be bright. Right, the sky you can have anything. I like having a whereabouts is it? I like having a black sky with red fog and just have a blue sunset. It doesn't really matter about the sunset. Right. Now in terrain features, we want caves, mine shafts, we want dungeons, ravines and um, that's it. Uh, in terrain generation you just want standard terrain. In time you want eternal day. In weather you want no weather. And in world modifier, now this is basically what will corrupt your world. With lots of dense ores it's gonna corrupt your world while like, all the blocks are gonna fall uh, every so often. Okay now let's just do this and call this the resource center 
because why not <laughs> alright so now we're ready uh, now we teleport to the dimension and I'll show you why having tons of dinosaurs is so useful now this could be considered cheating but in a way it's using the mods that I have installed um, to a good use so here we go, here we go. Right, this is why dentsaurs are so good. It spawns a lot of ores. And as you can see, even though we added dentsaurs, it still uh, has an opportunity to randomly add in to main features like dentsaurs, and it's made it so it's charged, so there's lightning. Um, but that's okay, because we're going to be in the cave system anyway. Alright. So what you need to do is just go really deep down. Depending on what ore you need to get, I'm going to get iron, gold, and diamonds. So, even though I normally, I'd normally cut out mining in the Let's Play, because uh, I'm just showing you the dense ores and how fun it actually is to mine uh, tons of ores, um, I'm showing it anyway. Um, so, I'm gonna, only going to get a bit of iron and gold, and I'm going to go straight to diamond level and try and find lots of diamonds. Uh, that's the main plan, because I need... Um, right, let me show you here. Uh, basically... I need, um, where is it? <laughs> ah, there it is. I need the energy condenser, and that's created with uh, diamonds, obsidian, and then this is made with diamonds, and then you need the dusts, which consists of coal and cobblestone. Hit U for the uses, and then you can find the covalence dust, which is redstone and iron ingot, and, oh, and this conveyance dust which is coal and diamond uh, but then what you do with that is you can convert items with an EMC uh, and that's basically the currency for uh, the chest and you can convert it to items with a higher EMC so it uses up the EMC in those items and it depletes the items but um, it gives you EMC towards an item in the chest so it spawns it it's a very useful tool which I'll show you how to use when I create it um, but right now I need the resources for it. So let's uh, let's try and venture down into diamond level. Uh, we can see there's a mine shaft here. Uh, and a ravine. There's some diamonds. Uh, now there's actually a few tools which will make this a lot more easier. Oh, haha, <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, one is the, um, the dark matter pickaxe. And that allows you to right click a vein of ore and it depletes the whole orb, it turns it into an orb and then the orb is uh, transported above your head and then you pick it up and it gives you all the ore it's a really fast way to get resources another word, another tool which is good for that is the... it's around here somewhere um, Here it is, uh, it's the Red Matter Pickaxe, but also the Red Morning Star. Uh, so those are very useful. So let's just, I'm just going to gather the diamonds now, now that I've shown you the basics of the dense ores. I'm just going to stop the video, mine lots of uh, diamonds and stuff. I'm going to try and capture some corruption occurring, just so you know what to look what to look out for. But apart from that, um, I'll uh, see you when i got more resources. The only reason why I'm doing the dense ores is because uh, the mods that I'm using, such as industrial craft and build craft, they're very resource heavy. So I wouldn't really recommend doing this if you just have missed craft installed because the game would get very boring for you. Uh, but because uh, the mods that I'm using are very resource heavy, I'm, I'm doing this because um, it's still keeping a legit fashioned. Uh, way of obtaining these resources. I did work hard to get the Tensor's um, uh, terrain feature. But um, I'm pretty sure that should be good. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back and I'm going to create um, a few items. I'll sh obviously show them, show you how to craft them. Alright then guys, so what I created was I created a world um, which would basically generate me um, glowstone crystals and they're big massive crystals um, of glowstone so I got some glowstone dust from that uh, because what I want to create here is the philosopher's stone that's created with four glowstone dust 
four redstone and one diamond. So let's, uh, we have all the resources. So let's use the glowstone, the redstone, and one diamond to craft the philosopher's stone. Now you might have noticed there's a little bar there. Uh, what this bar does is you can press V to charge it up once, V to charge it up again, that just charges it up halfway, and then you press V twice to get it full charge. Uh, now, uh, one thing that you can do is hold down shift and press V and it takes away the charges. Now when used on grass, it will turn uh, grass to sand and sand back to grass. Um, but if you're holding down shift and you click on grass, it will turn it to cobblestone and then turn it back to grass. Now if you use it on cobblestone, it will turn to stone. And if you hold down shift and use it on stone, it turns to grass. Uh, the more you charge it up, the bigger radius it affects. So what I'm going to do, was the main reason why I built my house out of cobblestone was because I could easily change it to stone. The click of a button, easily changed to stone. And that gives it a much more authentic look. So I'd recommend uh, getting yourself a philosopher's stone. Right, now to make what I wanted to create, which was... I keep forgetting the names of it, that's why NEI is very, very useful. Um, I think I'm going the wrong way now. Um, yeah, here we go. Uh, energy condenser. I need obsidian. Now, I'm going to show you how to com uh, create the covalence dusts. But uh, one thing I do need to create, uh, I need to go mining for obsidian. But I'll show you how to make the dusts. So I got the iron ingots and I smelted some. Just use one iron ingot and one redstone to create the light blue covalence dust. Oh, I need to dive into my chest, get more cobblestone. Okay, now fill in eight spaces with cobblestone and put one piece of coal. Oh wait, no, it has to be charcoal. So uh, I'm going to have to get some charcoal, uh, but I'll do that off camera. But that's the basic recipe, but that needs to be charcoal. And that will give you the green covalence dust. And then I'm pretty sure it's one redstone and one diamond. Nope, I'm wrong. Let's just search covalence dust. Right, dark blue is one diamond and one coal. I was wrong. There you go. So there's the light blue covalence dust. So all we need now is charcoal. Uh, but I'll do that off camera as well as getting obsidian. Uh, so I actually need to make... Oh, I don't have enough wood. My wood is in the village. Um, so I'll make the pickaxe off camera as well. Alright then guys, so I'm back from the mine. I stupidly brought all my stuff with me. Um, but I got the four obsidian. <coughs> and um, I got the charcoal as well. I'm just creating a stone. There we go. Alright. We are good to go. So first of all we need to create the chest so let's go ahead and pop that icon in there, we forgot the chest so <laughs> what we need to do is we need to go back to the uh, village in fact let's quickly get some sand and make some glass because what we can do with the EMC is we can reproduce a lot of glass from very common resources which is very very useful uh, because glass takes a lot of time to produce so let's close the door let's put one bit of wood in there and some sand right we need to create a chest using eight pieces of wood okay and now we should be ready so let's put the question mark there so those bits there are two bits of stone we need two bits of iron one chest, one diamond, and other dusts. Dark blue in the right, top right, light blue in the middle, and I forgot to create. Oh, uh, stupid phone. <laughs> um, we forgot to create the green covalence dust, but that's easily done. Charcoal and cobblestone gives you the green covalence dust. Right, so quickly create it again. All the covalence dusts green, light blue, and blue in that order at the top. 
2 versus stone, side by side of the diamond, chest below the diamond, and 2 bits of iron ingots. That gives you the alchemist chest. Okay, now that we've created that, we need to create the energy condenser. Let's create the, put the question mark, that makes crafting a lot more easier. So, 4 diamonds, 4 bits of obsidian, and the chest gives us the energy condenser. Now, I can finally show you how amazing this thing is. Right, so we place that down. Let's get our glass out. Okay, so this is the interface for the energy condenser. You can see a little bar up here, and that's how much EMC is currently uh, produced in the chest. So let's say we have a diamond here. Okay. Now, you can see cobblestone has an EMC of 1, and iron ingot has an EMC of 256. If we put, like, two iron ingots in there, it transfers it into EMC. Now we have 512 EMC in there, but because it does, it's not enough to reproduce one diamond, which is 8192 EMC, it stores it in that bar there. Now, you can close the chest, and it'll still, the EMC will still stay in there, apart from the bar there didn't seem to stay that strange um, but now what we can do we can reproduce 512 pieces of glass because the EMC for glass is 1 so let's quickly produce that and now we have 512 pieces of glass because we uh, sacrificed resources for lower tier resources now say we made too much glass here uh, what we can actually do yeah, say we only want, uh, let's say two stacks of glass at the moment. We can then put a diamond in there, and it will convert all the glass back into EMC. So you don't need to worry about chests getting overfilled. Let's just sort my inventory and make it look more, more nice. Let's put everything in here. Alright. So uh, now it's all transferred back into EMC, and we can take the diamond out. But apart from now, I've showed you a lot in this Let's Play, actually. Um, so I'm, I'm going to end it here. Um, I think the next episode... The next episode, um, I want to focus on actually expanding my house. I want a few areas. I want a hive area as well. And um, I want to start doing some build craft creations. So stay tuned for the next video. Until then, guys, take care.